Do you remember, Joseph, a time before dating apps? Honestly, no. People would just place adverts essentially in the local newspaper if they were looking for perhaps a, a mistress or a friend or a, or, a, or a lover. And these were called the Lonely Hearts adverts. So let me tell you the story of the Lonely Hearts killers. We'll go right back to 1949. Okay. Albany in New York. So it's January 1st and we have a 66 year old called Janet Faye. Nice. Right. And she's ready to bring in the new year. She's going to meet her new flame, her okay. new man. New, right? 66. Yeah, and he goes nice. by the name of Charles Martin. So she, Janet, is a widow, right? And she's very, very religious. She's a devout Catholic. She's a very strong pillar in her community. She's at church every Sunday, loved by her neighbors. She is a great woman. Meets up with Charles, her new flame, because uh, he answers her Lonely Hearts adverts. He has claimed to be a like-minded like, like -minded with her religious beliefs. So they're on the same wavelength when right. it comes to religion. And he was a very successful businessman and he was really keen on her. And I think that was very appealing. She was like, he seems like a lovely man, yeah. right? He came from a really nice family, right? What is not attractive about that? You know? Absolutely nothing. Except he was also very particularly close with his sister. Okay. Right, Martha. That's, that's not a name. bad thing. No. So when they met up to keep Janet from being a bit too, you know, freaked out, he bought Martha with him to put her at ease a little bit. And they stay with Janet in New York for a couple of days. And after a few days, he pops the question, he proposes. And she's like, yes, thank God, please. So they're smitten with each other. But Janet's not so much smitten with Martha because obviously a bit of a third wheel. Mm. Um, See? And Ma exactly. And Martha's also being quite cold and unresponsive and uncomfortable and protective mm. of her brother. Like she's not being nice to Janet at all, which is a bit of an uncomfortable situation, I would argue. Um, so around two weeks later, Janet's stepdaughter, she's called Mary Spencer. Uh, they were very close. She gets a message from Janet. She receives a letter. Janet's letter... Uh, was kind of insinuating that she intended to move like hundreds of miles away to go to Florida with Charles and had given Mary, her stepsister, her stepdaughter, um, kind of instructions on how to pack up all of Janet's stuff and move it to a different apartment. It was all a bit suspicious. I think Mary was a bit suspicious. Okay. She was like, this is weird. Janet wouldn't really say this kind of stuff. Yeah. But what was most suspicious is that in the letter, it was typed, like it was on a typewriter. It wasn't handwritten. So number one, Mary didn't even think that Janet had owned a typewriter. So that was kind of red flag number one. Okay, yeah. And didn't even know how to use one. She would only ever send handwritten letters to right. Mary. big red flag. So Mary's like, okay, something's wrong. So after Janet, so what had happened? After Janet had said yes to Charles' proposal, he was like pushing her to get that wedding going. He was like, let's get married, let's go. This meant moving house like a few hours outside of Albany to his apartment in Long Island. And he also convinced her to write a series of checks that came up to about $4,000. Okay. In that time, that would have been probably about 45,000 pounds now. Oh. Dollars. $45,000 now. That's that a be. lot of money. And she grows even more concerned and very confused by the fact that Charles isn't going to sleep with her. So she goes, I'm going to seduce him. So pretty directly in the living room, she lies on the sofa just naked, just waiting for him to come in, expecting that he will enter the door. But before he finds her, guess who walks in and finds her? I think it's uh, his sister. It is. Yeah. So Charles's sister, Martha, walks in. Martha went berserk. She was berating Janet. She was having a go at her. It was like, obviously Janet's completely embarrassed. And Janet told Martha that as soon as her and Charles were going to be married, Martha would be kicked out. They're not going to live with her anymore. Good. Stand your ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. As you should. I like that. That's what I say. So Martha, filled with jealous rage, picks up a hammer, batters Janet over the head with it. Okay. Doesn't kill her. Oh. Just repeatedly over the head. Oh, hits that makes it almost worse. Doesn't it just? Charles comes in, sees what has ensued. Uh-huh. Gets a scarf, ties it around Janet's neck. Oh. And actually uses that Hannah as a tourniquet and kills Janet. So Janet's now dead because she's been strangled with a scarf. That's yeah. not how I was hoping that was going to go. So they cleaned up the scene. Yeah. And they just let... Janet's body stay where it was until the next morning. They put it in a suitcase and then took it to another rented apartment in Queens, 
where they then buried it under cement in the basement. It was then that Charles wrote letters on a typewriter to Janet's family and friends as part of the cover-up. So he wrote the letter that Mary right, had received right, right, okay, from yeah. Janet. It's starting to add up a that bit. That Mary was a bit confused by. So stay with me. We're going to jump 100 miles west okay. to Michigan. Why? Well, let me tell you. We're going to go to a town called Grand Rapids where there lived a lovely Delphine Downing. So Delphine Downing was a widow. She was 28, so much younger than Janet. Uh, and she, her husband had died and she mm. had a two-year-old daughter called Raynell. Sure. Lovely, lovely little Raynell. Uh, and she'd gotten to the point where she wanted to build a secure life for herself and her daughter and start a new family. Yeah. So this is January 1949. As in the same January. The same January, the same month. So around this time, Delphine, yep. Delphine Downing invites a man, a love interest, to come and stay with her at her house that she'd met over the Christmas period. Mm. He's a successful businessman. That's what he says he is. Okay. And so, you know, he's looking for love and he's drawn to Delphine. Do you want to guess what the guy's name is? Oh, I know what his name is. Is it Charles? It's Charles Martin. So yeah, here he we is. can imagine that this is in the same month that he was talking to Janet. So the issue is socially, contextually, in 1940s in a small little town in America, an unmarried woman who had not long been widowed uh, to host a gentleman cooler out of wedlock prying eyes especially in yeah. the suburb that she lived in like people would be wondering what's going on people sticking their noses and stuff yeah 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 and in some cases annoying in some cases maybe that's what you want sure uh, but luckily for everyone involved it was okay because charles bless his heart brought lovely old martha with him his sister yeah so at the end of february the neighbors they're a bit suspicious because people hadn't seen delphine this is the end of february so people hadn't seen oh, okay. her or raynell for a while and they weren't really sure why Martha and Charles were still at the house. Okay. Do you know what okay. I mean? Something seemed a bit funny. Yeah. Something seemed a bit off. So a neighbor of Delphine calls the police. So they arrive at Delphine's uh, door. They knock and guess who answers? Charles. And Martha. And Martha. Indeed they and do. And Martha, always and Martha. Brother and sister. Yeah. Delphine, nowhere to be seen. No one can find her. So they're questioned. And Charles and Martha come up with a story that Delphine and Raynell were in Detroit, like visiting friends. They, it was just like weird and that they were watching the house. It was like a weird made up story. But the sheriffs who were interviewing them had noticed bags in the hallway as if someone was about to arrive or someone was about to leave. So they storm the house. They raid the house, right? They're, they're like in the house, they get to the basement. Mm. What happens in the basement? They notice a patch of cement on the floor. Yeah. And we know what happens with cement. Yeah. In these people's lives. It wasn't just ordinary cement, it was wet cement. Right? Fresh. It had just been recently put down. Yeah. Like fresh wet cement. So they start digging in the wet cement and they realise it's a shallow grave of two yeah, dead bodies. That's not great. Delphine and Raynell. So the details from this case we know came from Charles Martin himself. Um or should I say? Oh. Should I say Raymond Fernandez? Oh my God, there's a whole other personality. Right, there's a whole other person. That was his real name all along. So Raymond. Raymond. Raymond Fernandez. That was his real name. And you know the biggest plot twist of them all? Gee. Martha. It's not his sister. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's not his sister. Yeah. Who yeah, they're, they're like married, aren't they? Who or something. Could Martha B. She was in fact his girlfriend. So they were con artists, essentially. Right. So initially they were just going around the country targeting like really lonely, often widowed um, women. <laughs> At first, it was just for the money. Okay. But then the unplanned death of Janet Faye. So it was spontaneous what happened That there. murder was not planned in the slightest. Mm. So once he was caught, Raymond, mm. or Charles Martin, but Raymond, he confessed to literally everything. And I'll explain his confession. So according to that, Delphine was rattled one night. She was a bit spooked because she had accidentally walked in on him in the bathroom to find out, lo and behold, he was bald. What? I know. He was wearing a toupee. And she began to get cold feet. Yeah. Because she was like, what else are you lying to me about? Like, this is so, this is such a betrayal of you. Mm. I, so at this point, she also had concerns that she might be pregnant with his baby. That, as a recent video, would have been a really big scandal. So that was something she wanted to avoid. And she had confided in Martha about this. So Martha gave Delphine a handful of pills and claimed that they would work as abortion pills. However, those pills were sleeping pills. So Delphine collapses 
after overdosing. Raynell, her daughter's in the room and starts crying because she's seen her mum passing out. That's horrifying and really traumatic. So she starts crying. Martha cannot deal with it. So she grabs the toddler around the neck and begins to strangle her. And Raymond has to pull her off. However, Raymond notices that Martha has left like marks on Raynell's neck and is furious with Martha because if Delphine wakes up, she'll call the police because, you know, her daughter's now got, you know, strangle marks yeah. on her. So Raymond takes a pistol that Delphine kept in the house, shoots Delphine between mm -hmm. the eyes, immediately killing her. Yeah. This then, because Raynell is still in the room, Raynell's the two-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Has just seen her mother been slaughtered in front of her. Sure, so yeah. She's just seen her mother die. And she starts to cry and cry and she won't stop crying. They start to try and stop Raynell crying. Like try and console her, which right. is kind of bizarre. And then for the next couple of days, try and look after her. Oh, days. And at one point, Raymond just says to Martha, take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and thought you, this was coming. Yeah. yeah. You can imagine what happens. Martha went down to the basement. She ran a small bath in the tub and then proceeded to drown the two-year-old Raynell killing her and they then buried Raynell and Delphine in the basement. God, that's horrible. Yeah, that is very dark. Okay, so the police catch them. The police catch them and stopped their crime. Raymond and Martha just confessed to everything. So Raymond at, at this point has admitted to killing as many as 20 women. 20? Yeah. And so this has been going on for... Well, none of that was proven. So he's confessed, but none of it was proven. So we're not entirely sure, but that is what he confessed to. Martha maintained that she only knew of three of the murders. So Delphine, Raynell and Janet. Michigan doesn't have the death penalty. Right. So they confess thinking that they'll be, you know, their sentence will be reduced because they're not going to get the death penalty. Once the public found out about what they had done, especially once they found out they had killed a two-year-old, sure. they were extradited back to New York, which had the death penalty. And after a trial lasted 43 days, they were found guilty and sentenced to death. Well, there you go. They were executed by the electric chair at Sing Sing Prison on the same day, March 8th, 1951. And did they get their meal? They did. So for her last meal, Martha Beck ordered fried chicken, French fries, um, a lettuce and tomato salad. And then Raymond Fernandez ate an onion omelette, French fries and a bar of chocolate, finished by smoking a Cuban cigar. Whew. See, I'm not sure how I feel about the onion omelette, but I definitely could get behind this. So he sneaks into uh, a house where there is a young woman sleeping and he bludgeons her with a metal rod that has been taken from her bed frame. He then, uh, a month later, commits his first kill. 